Hint number one, too certain. Alternatives with absolute or universal qualifiers are usually wrong. Now, what do we mean by a universal qualifier? Well, if a statement or concept applies all the time. So if you see an alternative which includes the words like all, every, never, in no case, or in every case, etc., then this is a hint that this is probably not the correct answer. The reason being, because your instructor probably wants to test you on a complex concept, a concept um, that applies in some cases and doesn't apply in other cases. That makes it an interesting and a complex concept, and it's worthy of an exam question. Your instructor doesn't want to waste an exam question on something that's trivial or obvious, such as the sky is always blue. That isn't worthy of an exam question. So let's take a look. Suppose we're given this exam question. The central limit theorem applies. We're given these options, A, B, C, and D. And we have absolutely no idea which one to choose. Well, a hint would be that it's not all the time because that's a universal qualifier. If the central limit theorem applies all the time, then it's a boring concept. It's not interesting. Okay, so keep this in mind, and this is the first hint. So in this case, we've just increased our chances. Rather than guessing out of four options, we can now guess among three options. And actually, there's another hint here, which I will talk about later in this course. Hint number eight. Opposites attract. If two answers are the complete opposite of each other, one of them is very likely to be the correct answer. Instructors like to post the antagonist, or the complete opposite, or the you know evil twin, of the correct answer as an option to confuse you. So I know this is a habit of mine. So I tend to write down the correct answer, a whole bunch of, you know, incorrect fluff answers, and also write the opposite of the correct answer to try to confuse the student and test their knowledge. So let's take a look at an example. A net present value that is positive suggests that, and blah, blah, blah. Suppose we haven't studied <laughs> for the net present value and we're completely lost. Well, if we look at A and B, the project is a good investment, the project is a bad investment. They're the complete opposite of each other. So I would focus on these two options and choose one of those and increase my chances now from one to four to one to two. Hi guys, hope you found these tips helpful. If you'd like to learn more, I've actually got a complete course on the art of guessing multiple choice questions. I cover over 11 tools that will help you sniff out the correct answer in a multiple choice question and I also have a complete exam strategy that will maximize your marks even when you're running out of time in the exam. And as my YouTube students, you guys get to enroll in my course at a massive discount. So check out the link below for a preview on my entire course. And if you like what you see, be sure to sign up. So if you ever run out of time in a multiple choice exam or if you're never 100% studied for an exam, then this course is perfect for you. Good luck.